It's your second day, walking along the dusty farmer's track towards Baldur's Gate in the crisp morning air. The four of you, Mowgli, the feral child, Little Red, the huntsman's child, Prince al Adin, and Rapunzel. Rapunzel's gone. Perception checks. I've got 10. 14. I got a nat 20. Give me a card. Leave no trace. You and you alone see gold hair just off the road and slipping through the tall grass. It goes over towards a single tree. The tree is old, it's dead, but that's where the hair goes. It's her braid. You can barely see it and nobody else even noticed. Uh, gone. Yes, we, we, we've had people gone missing in, in my kingdom before, and we, we must look for some clues. Here. Yes. No, here. He motions towards something just sticking out of the grass, just barely. Rapunzel? A shock of gold. That is not Rapunzel, but it is her hair. So, so can we, like, pull our way along the hair? You follow the hair to an old, dead, hollowed-out tree. R Rapunzel! Rapunzel? I, I, are, are you okay? How, how, how did you get inside the tree? We needed a place to stay. The jam's this way. I've not had jam in some time. I bet we can find a cabin with jam yes. somewhere. Delicious. But this is here. And up there, it's just so, it's so big. You're right, it's a big world. But you know what, we're all making do. Um, so why don't you come along with us and uh, we'll get to know this big world. We must all stick together. Yes. Okay, all right. Let's go. Perfect. All right. The four of you continue to walk west towards the city of Baldur's Gate. Along the way, you're joined by several others, mostly adults, many farmers, and like you, they seem to be refugees. No one is sure of what has happened behind you to the east, but the tone is glum. Something very bad has happened. Something that has left many people, including some of you, without family or home to return to. Is there any word from the town where my parents were? Nothing. In fact, some of these people are leaving that area and moving towards Baldur's Gate for the same reason. You see one grime-covered farmer He's walking and he's gone. He's, they all gone. They, they was there and then, then they wasn't and then the dead. I saw the skeletons too. What skeletons? You saw them? Yes. I bet that's what led me to the tower. No, the horse led you to the tower. First there were skeletons, then there was the the horse. But skeletons are inside people. These were outside of people. But you don't worry about it. I bet they wouldn't stand a chance against your hair. I don't want to tangle people in my hair. Especially not skeletons that are outside of people. That's very strange. It's not until the next morning that a patrol of soldiers from Baldur's Gate find you and the others. You're in a sprawling, slightly rundown neighborhood and the guard responsible for you takes the four of you to what appears to be a small temple made of stone. In the courtyard, there's an odd stone statue of a man taking a knee. His bound hands lifted up to protect what appears to be his crying face. There is so, there are so many towers here. Rapunzel, roll a 20-sided for me. This is a religion check. 15. This is a statue of Ilmater. Uh, that, one of, one of my books had a drawing in it. They, they would have paintings and art, and there was one that described the, the, the crying god, Ilmater. Well, you do know things from those books. He is the martyred one. He stands for those who, who cannot, and he takes their pain. 
He is the suffering God. So these people must have been through something. You know him? No, but I can tell there is much suffering here. We, we should find somewhere safe and out of sight. The soldier in front of you, he gestures towards the statue as he passes. And he continues to take the four of you through the modest temple and towards a similarly modest wooden building in the back of this place. Come, children. He knocks on the door, and after a moment, a very old, slim-faced, kind man with a wispy beard opens the door. The soldier is like, more children, Father Grimm. Did you say Father Grimm? Uh, yeah, I'm Father Grimm. Yeah. Uh, if, don't be silly. Uh, if, the crying God has led these children here because they need a safe place to stay and warm food in their bellies. Come, children. Welcome to the orphanage of Ilmater. Father Grimm, are you related to Brother Grimm? Yes, he's my brother. My father is one of the Hell Riders, and he told me to come and find you, that you would be safe. He looks past you and all around you, never locking on completely. He rotates his ear toward you just a little bit. What is your name? My name, well, my father calls me Little Red. I am Jacob, but most call me Father Grimm. Come, come. Is he a prince? Not like me, no, but... You enter the man's orphanage. Humble as it is, it's warm and smells of baked bread. It's filled with nearly 20 children sitting along several tables eating dinner. Some of them look up at you. A fire roars in the fireplace on the far side of the room, where there sits another man quietly. A large cat lazily hops down off the table and pads towards the four of you, curious. I'm, this is too, too many people. Oh, okay. I am, a, oh, okay. I'll be right out, okay. outside. Calm down. I, I, I think we can trust them. I think they're trying to help us. And, and we have questions. Have you heard of any travelers like us, perhaps from, from far lands and who have wound up here with no explanation? There have been many travelers. Five in the last two days have come from the east. You are from there? We all hail from, I, I fear, different lands. I am from Umara. I've not heard of this place, but welcome. I, I am from the path, uh, far, far from the path, that way, and then, and then up high. Well, Father Grimm, I have a question. Do you have anyone who teaches um, common language lessons? because our friend Mowgli here does not speak many common words. Though he reaches I, towards he Mowgli's face. Speaks. He pulls his hand back. He's like, ah, ah, well, welcome. Uh, yeah. Uh, we need food, shelter, and I course. would really like to meet Brother Grimm, yeah. since that is who my father told me to find. He backs away and he leans on his staff. Oh, and he jolts a little bit. There are my manners. And there's a cat rubbing up against them. Is that a squirrel? This is puss. This is no, cat. I would, I would like to pet the, 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 the cat? It's, it's a cat, cat, not a squirrel? Walks right up to you and rubs its body against your leg. Hello. Oh, she found a friend. And then it turns around and rubs up against you, avoiding you like the plague. I would like to use an ability that my father taught me and form a beast bond. Immediately comes to you, and you form the bond. Meow. Is there anything that is suspicious going on here, and are we safe in this company? Yes. Meow. Okay. And he walks off, and he walks under the table, and he plops down. You see them talking to each other, mm -hmm. and you don't think anything of it, because you talk to animals all the time, but you don't hear what they're saying. Uh, but. He walks off and he plops down on his stomach. Okay, I'd like to talk to more people around here to try to get some information also on what happened to my parents in the town that they were in. Um, so I look around the room. There are, there's the man by the fire. Who else is around? The man by the fire, he hasn't moved a single inch since you've been here. He's just... I'd like to ask him some questions. Uh, Father Grimm kind of follows the sound of you as you get closer to him. I'd like to ask him what, where he's from and what he's seen. A 
I will tell you that his steel gray eyes look right through you, and if you get in their way, they don't waver. They just continue to... Ooh. I wander over and sniff him. Roll a 20 set. Deception. Mm. Deception. That's going to be 23. It is this very slightest scent of what comes off of bad eggs. A, th- a touch of an old taint of sulfur. I look over to gauge their reaction. Just this one, give me an insight roll. Oh, wow. 22. He, Mowgli, what do you feel about this? And that's what he'll see. Um, not threatened, even though it reminds me a little bit of fire. So confused. I'm trying to, I'm trying to place if I've smelled that somewhere else before. Um, I think that's very rude. Yes. Does the, does the man notice Mowgli sniffing him? Hello? My brother, he's been in this condition for some years. I continue to take care of him, and I was hoping he would react, but alas, is he is not. Is this brother Grimm? This is my brother Wilhelm Grimm, <sighs> yeah. Oh, he knew my father. Yes. My father was the huntsman. You called him the huntsman. He was a hell rider with you. I believe that he hears you, so if you have stories for him or you want to share something, please do. Father Grimm, does he not talk? He does not talk. He chews, and I can close his eyes at night. And I believe he watches over the children. Also, you are now the oldest here. And and my eyes are not exactly what they used to be, so your help would be appreciated in looking after the smaller children as well. Would you help me with this? In exchange for shelter and food? Of course. Yes, Father Grimm. And Father Grimm, if you don't mind my asking, can you tell me more about when this started with Brother Grimm? Because from the stories that my father has told me, he was a vibrant and passionate man. He was one of the greatest of the Hell Riders, along with your father, the Huntsman? Yes. No doubt. I do not know the event, but they brought him back like this, and that is when I assumed care for him. Thank you, Father Grimm. We will do our best to to thank you for your hospitality and uh, take care of these younger children. Jam. Jam. Yes, jam. Do you have jam? Jam. This way. Please, have a seat. I will serve you. Come, come. And you guys sit down and you join the other children. There is a knock at the door and Father Grimm uh, looks up. He aims his ear towards the door. Uh, Have we you checked stay, that it's you safe? Stay. Safe, safe. It's just a city, of course. It's safe. And he just finds the handle. Wham! And it slams him in the face. You see the door explode in and just crush his nose square in the face. One, two, three big men into the room with violence in mind. The first guy in looks at everybody with all the children screaming, and he goes, SHUT IT! Wisdom saves. 14. Very good. Six, then. Nine. One. Fate deck. Warning. You are terrified. This big guy with a massive crossbow, this thing is for killing usually on a battlefield. He's got it aimed at your faces. I'm winking, that's blinking, and that's my brother Nod. And that skinny guy goes, mm. we's what you call adventurers, freedom fighters, if you will, or liberators. The blinky guy, yeah, liberators. We liberate people's stuff. And the first one says, shut your dead git. So what's gonna happen since we's famous adventurer types, We's gonna lie low here, so our fans don't bother us. See? And when we think the heat's off, we'll be on our way. Until then, you would do well to keep it shut. Especially you, little one. Keep it shut and nobody gets hurt. So they just want us to wait this out. I think we should let them know that it's safe here, that they're 
They're worried about being caught. They said they they like fans. Maybe we Jam. can have fans. Does anyone he have wants fans? Food? Jam. Mm. He wants Jam. food. He takes his jam. knife. Jam. Here, have he slides I... it into the thing. Jam. Jam's the answer to he everything. He can get his own jam. Yeah. This is, this is, this this is, is about everyone's safety. Give he walks over to the table and he grabs one of the bowls. And you see the other one go, uh, yeah, it's a good idea. Can I get some of that? Uh, yes. Give it to him, yes. yes. If it means keeping the children safe, yes. Yes, I. Give me that. He grabs a loaf. Been on the run for three days. I mean, liberating. Yeah. Liberating. Well, I'll tell you, I want to try to take them out, but maybe the best thing is to wait it out if... If we were alone, perhaps, but not while other safety. A lot of children are crying. Oh, they're crying? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go help the crying children because I don't want them suffering. That's not fair. Kids Very should, should well. not be scared. We should move over to our own side and begin to herd the children maybe to the other side of the room. And you do? I start telling stories to the kids to try and keep them calm. I tell them of Milena's strength and her courage in the face of fear and that they need to be strong and smart, just like her. Give me a performance roll. <sighs> okay. Oh, nat 20. She's a natural. Let's see. What does fate have to say about that? Overrun. You are their favorite storyteller from now on. The children are wrapped by your story to the point that they almost forget that those men are in the other corner feeding their faces. The tall one, the slim one, the one with the hat, the last one to enter, the one that hasn't spoken. He sits down, not close, but he listens to your story and he's been eating, but you see him He's listening, and he just puts his arm on the table. He had a lot of bread and soup. And as he is, I'm watching this, I am going to message to the one who has the swords and say, I think he's tired. Maybe they're all tired. The big one, as you glance back, he's leaning against the wall. Has any, anyone been taking care of Father Grimm? Well, he wasn't crying. He was His hit. head was bonked. Yeah. That's true. Not everyone has all that hair. It makes an He's excellent He's still lying cushion. on the floor. I approach uh, Father Grimm and... Oi. Uh, what are you doing? I just want to make sure that Father Grimm is okay. Uh, you hit him on the head when you entered. What are you going to do for him? I know a little bit of medical training that my father taught me. Oh, do you know? He's an old man, he can't see. He's not harmful to anyone. Blinking, get your ass over here. You know, fine. She was gonna teach me something. And he goes and sits down next to his brother. And then he leans back. The leader is tired. You can tell from his posture. But Blinken, he's watching what you're doing. You are now at Father Grimm. So I want to check his wounds. Is he still, is he knocked out? His nose has a cut right here. It's yeah. broken a little bit. And he's got a good lump in the back of his head from. Okay, so I would like to cast uh, Cure Wounds. Give me uh, a roll to let me know how much damage you healed. Seven. His nose heals just a little bit and the break seems to go. His breathing returns to normal and the pain in his face subsides. Good. Blinken. He gets away from his brother. Him. I think he's going to be okay now. Oh, that's good, that's good. How'd you learn that trick? It's not really a trick. It was just something my father taught me to take care of people. Did you teach me? He squats down next to you, next to Father Grimm. What do you think? Honestly, I'm not that good at it. It's nothing that special. Um, I wish I could teach you. Are Come you in need of Tell some healing? It. He grabs you by the wrist and he leads you over to the other side. Mowgli, give me insight. 
19. This guy is a predator, a human predator. You hate these kind more than the rest. The other one, he's kind of like a bear, the vibe of an omnivore. He can be dangerous, but not unless he's pressed. The other one's kind of a wolf. You get his vibe, but he's a wolf with a full belly, so eh. But this guy, this guy reminds you of a large tiger you once knew. And he's grabbed her by the wrist and unpleasantly leads her across the room. I'd like to try to cast Charm Person on him. And as he is beginning that process, I see what he is doing. And I will also do the same thing, and mine will affect uh, two. So I will be back up. Go ahead and roll initiative for me. Five. Mowgli. Eleven. Rapunzel. Ten. Aladdin. Six. Rapunzel, what would you like to do in this I moment? would like to cast Charm Person. You reach up into your hair, and you use your fingers deftly, perfectly, to rotate and reconfigure the Celtic knots. And then you release the magic, and it flows out and sinks into them. Aladdin. I'd like to cast Charm Person as well. On which target? Blinken. Oh, you remember learning this on the streets of Umara from a snake charmer. You say the words, those ancient words that she taught you so long ago, that has gotten you out of so many scraps with the city guard after picking a pocket poorly. And they're like, you're a good kid, go on. You release that magic again. He believes that he is your old friend for now. You don't know how long it'll last, you for sure, because you never cast it on anybody before, but the magic is strong and solidly rooted. Hey, you two, come over here. This is his story. You know she's a ranger. It's the coolest thing. Why did you come here? Oh, you know what? Here's the thing. I killed this guy, and you don't normally kill City Watch, right? So they're like bees in a bonnet. They're upset. So we just go stay here. We figure when the heat's off, we go, and nobody knows the difference. I think we're going to water's deep yet. Yeah, water's deep. Well, wh why don't you go now? I mean, it, it's, it's nighttime. That's the point, though. We've been running for three days. As you can see, they've not had sleep. I'm kind of sleepy and to top things off myself. Let's start with that, you being tired. Why don't you let Red come over and talk to the children? Why is he looking at me like that? What's his problem? I got a little something for you. He pulls out a cleaver. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Prince. What, what do you say? Hands. Yes. yes. Friends. Friend, why don't you rest for now? Be a and we'll talk more tomorrow. If you can persuade him, maybe he'll do that. Because he is very tired. I would like to aid in any way I can <laughs> on the persuasion. This persuasion. All right, I'll give you that. You both suggest it, and since you're both friends, I'll give you advantage on that. Okay. Why we have to ten? And, uh, no, uh, uh, 12. And, well, maybe I'll take a nap. Finally. His eyes get very heavy. Boy. And he nods. So are all three asleep right now? They are out. So let's plan. I read that uh, Melina once, uh, when she was confronted by someone who meant her harm, was able to make them unconscious, and then she tied them up to keep them from attacking. But won't they be angrier when they awake? I don't think they're going to be happy when they awake regardless. So shall we tie them up and get all the children and Father Grimm out of here? We can't be responsible for all of these children. What do you think, Mowgli? Not here. Not here. Don't keep them here? Mm -hmm. Or don't keep the children here? Uh. Don't keep the, the children here? Yeah. Tie them up and let's get the children yeah. and father and brother Grimm yes. to a safe place. Yes. I don't know where to take them. We'll find a place to hide them. 
Mowgli, give me a perception check. That's gonna be 18. You smell dead meat. It's on his person, near his chest. It should not be him because he doesn't appear to be wounded. Um, so I'm going to ever so gently lift up his shirt to see what he's poking at. It's dope. And you move it to the side. On a strap of leather, you are quite sure you see a necklace of fingers on uh, his chest. That's disgusting. Well, we knew this guy was bad news. He is snoring softly. I'm going to set Hunter's mark. So if he happens to wake up, he's not making it out alive. I would like to make sure that there are no weapons near any of them. You want to walk up quietly and take that large crossbow away? Yes, I do. You do that? Yes. Give me a stealth check. 10. You know what, I'll give you advantage. He is asleep. 10. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. You go up and you reach down. You lift the crossbow. It is a heavy crossbow and it is loaded. And you take it with you. You do notice that Winken, he also has a heavy mace. I can send a mage hand over and lift it. I weave with awesome. my braid and it reaches out, extending, lifts the mace and pulls it to me. Just do it silently. Don't off balance it. You've never held a mace before. Roll the 20 set. What did you roll? <laughs> it was so good, I'm sure. Is it not obvious? <laughs> Savage offensive. Hmm. Well, you grab the maze by obviously the part that you grab it by, the very bottom. And the head goes. Do I see that it's gonna fall? It's falling. Jam? <laughs> and I wanna pull out my dagger and I wanna slice Blinken's throat. <gasps> and I wanna open it quickly instantly, like I've been trained to in all my hunts with my pack. <laughs> this is the way of the wolf. I, I'm going to quickly take my cloak and cover his mouth. He has no chance. He's asleep. He is unconscious to the world, and now his face is covered with your cloak, which was white until this <laughs> moment. You drive your dagger into his throat and hold it there. You are like, oh, and you see the maze dropping and you already have this crossbow in your hand. You're like, no, 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 no. But it goes, boom. Winken shoots out of his sleep and he looks and he sees you and you have a crossbow aimed at him and you're just like. It, it, we, we thought your, your, your items were very interesting and we wanted to look at them. We were examining your, your amazing tool. And seeing, making sure it was calibrated properly. Give me that, boy. He goes, boy, give me that. And he takes it and he puts it against the thing. <gasps> this is a one for his perception roll. This is Mage's contest. Your magic on him, your charm is so strong on him that even though his brother is being viciously <gasps> killed right behind him, he looks directly at you and he ignores that. He's like, boy, that's not a toy. You should learn lessons from her. You got nice hair. Thank you. Yes, Prince, you should right. learn lessons from me. <sighs> Why don't you go back to your nap? You seem so tired. Yes. It's been a long day. He gets back in the chair and he starts to relax. I want to tell him that his crossbow indeed is working well. And uh... Shut it. Um, Red, give me a survival roll. 19. There is no doubt when there is that much gore and yeah. your cloak is 
turning red on the edges. Oh yeah, he's dead. Nice. You may switch marks. Okay, so now both of them are asleep, is that correct? You but did which, it one, which one is closer to them? Winkin. So, so I want to go to that guy, even if it takes me Two a rounds, it's okay. Yeah, Hunter's Mark. Very good. We are back to Mowgli. Your hands are sticky. I want to pull my dagger out and then make my way quietly to Nod. You slink down, give me a stealth check. I'll give it to you at advantage. Your target is asleep. Yes! <laughs> Nat 20. What does fate have to say about that? And that's nausea. He is out. He is so full of warm soup and bread. He is carb crashed and his head is out. You can hear him. As you move towards him, he is deep out. I am just going to perch just right near him and stand completely still. Without even an effort, you walk up to the other side of the table that he's sleeping on, and you hop up and land silently, right with either of your feet on either side of his head. Mowgli, you spilled jam all over yourself. You need to go clean up. Aladdin, what would you like to do? A sneak attack. He's going back to sleep. He's very groggy, but I will give you advantage on a stealth check. Go ahead. Oh. Much better. Um, 18. You can already hear him. I creep up to him, spin my dagger in my hand, and plunge it directly into his jugular. Go ahead and give me a 20-sided. You do have advantage on this attack. He is completely out. Um, 17. Very good. 15. I will make this an automatic critical. It's just not a kill shot. And I'll give you an extra D6 for the attack. Go ahead and do that. What is that total? 22. Man, you guys are just horrible children. Horrible. <laughs> Very it's for good. the children. You swing, but you miscalculate and slam it directly into his collarbone. Uh. <laughs> His eyes snap open and he roars and he has no idea where he is. You want a deck save? 10 or better, otherwise he'll accidentally smack you in the face as he comes flying awake. Nine. Slams you in the face. Four. Four points of damage. <laughs> his just, arms just go flailing and he stands up. Give me a strength check. 10 or better. 16. You manage to yank the dagger back, blood pouring down his shirt. He's like, what, what? He's very, very discombobulated. Red, you have four axes in your holsters, is that correct? Yeah. What do you want to do? I want to throw one, and then I'm going to set Slayer's Prey, which is a bonus. Do it. 18. Go ahead and give me the damage. 14. <laughs> Oh! He yes. falls. That's awesome. You see Winkin fall hard. His head hits the side wall. And he just falls sideways. His propped up crossbow falls on top of his body. He does not move. But behind you, you hear a Mowgli, directly between your feet. That thumping sound kind of shocked this guy awake, and he's becoming aware that he's looking at a bare foot in front of him. This entire time, we've been traveling, I've been hearing stories, I've been like going through cities, which I'm not very comfortable with. This is something I am familiar with, the pack attacking, the pack defending itself. I would like to right now shift. Oh. Oh, one of the kids. Give me a... Intimidation roll at advantage. 17. When Nod looks at your foot and then looks up into your face, your face becomes angular and pulls back. <laughs> he freaks out and he kind of stands up and he's backing away from you. 
and you see his hands instinctively go to where his knife belt is. I would like to jump and bring my dagger down into his shoulder. Even as he puts his hands on his daggers, and he starts to bring the thought of pulling it out, you fly over the top of him. You may attack, and I'll give you plus two to the attack because you're in the air, and he's a little, <laughs> Okay. Mothy, you rock. 18. <laughs> you drop it on him, give me damage. And I will give you plus four to damage because of your weight coming down on him. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, so that's gonna be nine total. You drop on him, but you do not hit the ground. <laughs> you slam into his shoulder, but you put your feet on his chest. You are standing on top of him, and he's like, ah! Ah! he's screaming. Rapunzel. I think at this point I would faint. <laughs> <laughs> Aladdin. I need to get to that crossbow. Very good. You have no problem because there's no resistance. Just give me a strength check. Athletics will be fine. Oh, two. It's a heavy crossbow. It is. You said it's it heavy. was heavy. What are you going to do? Thank, thank God you said it you, was heavy. You pick it up, but his arm is through the bowstring. So you're like, oh, come on, man. That's what Give it me was. a break. You're sitting there struggling with this crossbow, but you can't get it free. I'd like to run over and help try to grab the crossbow. Very good. You run over there and you pull the arm out and you bring the crossbow free. What would you like to do with it? I'd like to give her the crossbow. <laughs> Here, you take this. <laughs> right. Stronger than me. I mean, I think that's Stop. evident Stop. right now. Right? <laughs> so I'm going to aim the crossbow at Nod now. After you guys do all of this grabbing, aiming, transferring, yeah. we'll come back. Mowgli. Uh, when you're on a hunt, you don't lose track of anyone around you in your pack. So I've been keeping track of everything else that's been going on. What I'd like to do, since I know there's a crossbow in the mix right now, is I would like to pull my dagger out, drop down. I can also grab his, you said that he had a knife belt around? Oh, yeah. I would like to just grab that and get that away from him. The entire belt is a belt. It's on his body. You might be able to slip one of them away from him, but there's at least three or four knives in well, that belt. Well, let's go for the biggest one. Give me an attack roll. 14. You drop down and he jerks this way, and you're like, Ugh! and you reach for it, but no, the dagger's just out of your reach. You missed it by that much. <sighs> Rapunzel. <laughs> your heart is beautiful, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you very much, Aladdin. I will perform another sneak attack. Give me an attack roll. 16. Do damage. 14. 14, thank you. You come in low and fast. Boom! And oh. then when he jerks like this, he opens up his kidney and you go for it. Boom. You come this close to nailing his kidney, but it goes through the fat and goes all the way through. Ah. You are tearing him apart from every direction. And he oh. spins away from you, heavily limping. Red. I'm gonna take the crossbow and point it at him and shoot. Roll your attack. 70. You fire. Punk. Yeah. The bolt leaves the bow, goes yes. up. It hits him. Okay. Good. In the back. Okay. Damage okay. piece. It's a nine. The bolt slams into his back and sends him into a nasty spin. He did not expect that, and he goes flying sideways, and he collapses on his own hat, and he crushes it on the on the table, and he tries to push himself up, and as he does, blood starts to pour out of his mouth, and he reaches weakly for a dagger, and he pulls it out, and he swings it wildly. You step back easily, and he swings it again, and he just stands there. He's got blood pouring out of his shoulder, and he flips it, and he drops over. I want to kneel next to him just to keep him company. The other two attacked us. This one, it was not fair. And in nature, we don't kill for sport. So I'm gonna kneel next to him and keep him company while this happens. Rapunzel, are you feeling better? Do you know any Maliki stories to tell the children? So I'm gonna tell them some tales of Maliki. I think you'd like this too. And they enjoy the story and it helps them deal with what happened tonight because you tell them about nature and how it can work and you start to understand that she understands nature. 
And that is a good thing. It has been a weird night. Perhaps tomorrow will be better.